It's the main character in the movie Rain Man, have you seen it? Of course I'm not that crazy, but I do have Asperger's syndrome. I'm pretty much the same as everyone else, but I have a few oddities. Okay, maybe there are more than a few quirks. Asperger's sufferers have a hard time reading social cues. Most people know that when someone yawns, it's time to stop talking. But we're not so sure. We're careful and rational, and you might know someone like us, a tech geek or a smart person like Sheldon from the Big Bang Theory. I'm very picky about things and don't say much. When I want to look someone in the eye, I often look at their mouth or nose instead. I do well in school because I follow the rules very carefully. I'm a great worker if I have clear chores and goals. But I'm not very good at being in charge. When your mom dies, why do you need a whole week off? Can't the funeral be over in one day? That means your boss might not have been completely crazy, they might just have had Asperger's. When I was young, my parents died, and my grandparents took me in. They had six kids, but none of them were quite like me. I always cause trouble at school, mostly because I ask things like, if this week is anti-bullying week, what was last week? Or, why do we have to quickly line up by height during a fire drill? Do people who are bigger burn less? My grandfather would sometimes shake his head and say, there's something off about that boy, even though I did well in school and got a grant for college. In high school, I never went on dates because I didn't get how girls could play with guys' heads. I just read everything I could get my hands on instead. Grandpa bought me a .403 for my 18th birthday because he is a sensible man and used to work in the Navy. I liked the gift like any other teenage boy would, and I made a deal with the girl that I would see her whenever I had money. My first big relationship began in a way I didn't expect. Before I began my Meals on Wheels route for seniors, I stopped at a mall to fill up my gas tank. It's not because I'm really nice. It had to be done for a grant. It was easy for me to choose Meals on Wheels because I could do it by myself. But as I went along, I found the older people very interesting. These people had been through a lot. They lived through the Great Depression and helped shape the past of our country. I could ask them questions, which made it even better. They were like live history books. They liked telling their stories to anyone who was interested. As I paid for my gas, a girl ran by being chased by two guys, a bigger one and a smaller one. The girl jumped into my car out of the blue and locked the doors. The two guys yelled and hit my car over and over. The store worker was already on the phone with important people. I walked over and yelled, Hey, get out of my way. Mutt, the shorter guy, told me to open the car door. I strong-armed them, I won't do that. We're going to wait for the cops. For my insurance, I need a report. Also, I need your information because both of you damaged the car. It was in great shape and belonged to my grandmother. Every Saturday, I washed it with mother's deluxe wax. Jeff, the bigger guy, spoke up. He then pointed at himself. The police are already here, so get that junk out of there now. I took a quick look at Jeff and Mutt. They didn't have badges or wear outfits. Please show me some ID or a card. Mutt moved in closer. He told Jeff, we don't have time for this. He then grabbed my arm and tried to twist it. Just so you know, I started martial arts to get stronger and more confident, which really helps me deal with things like this. They told me over and over that I couldn't respond unless someone touched me. Because I didn't like being touched, I liked this rule. With Asperger's, it fit my black and white view of the world. So, I didn't pay attention to words, but I did respond to actions. The neighborhood Aikido Dojo became like a second home to me because I went there three times a week and on Saturdays. Now we're in the present. Mutt was shocked when I fought back against his arm lock with a move I had learned over ten years of Aikido class. I told him, you touched me first. Please don't do that again, as I stood up. The girl in the car then yelled a warning while Jeff came charging at me. I felt like this was my last belt test. He turned into a gas pump after I did a move. The girl made fun of them. You two are too weak to handle one fat kid. You should get more friends before you get hurt. I wasn't amused. There was no sign that these guys were going to stop. Jeff quickly got up and pulled out a taser. I pushed his hand into a bucket of window wiper fluid when he tried to use it, which gave him a bad electric shock. 
Then I tried to avoid Mutt's stick and hit him with a squeegee, which tripped him. There was silence when Mutt pulled out a magnum and told me to stop moving. Run from a knife, run at a magnum, was a term we used a lot when practicing tool defense. An AR-15 is more dangerous than a knife from far away, so the plan was to get closer. I rolled up to Mutt because most people shoot high. At that very moment, Mutt broke my car window twice. The girl screamed. I caught Mutt off guard and quickly took away his weapon by putting my hand on his elbow and wrist. At that very moment, a police car with sirens going came along. The police told me to put down the tool. Someone hit me, and Mutt jumped on me. I lost consciousness. It took more than a day in jail with no phone calls or rights read. In the end, it was Mutt and Jeff who hurt me while I was being held. It looked like the other prisoners were impressed that I stood up to two police officers. The jail staff, who had been avoiding me, became tense on the second day. Some of them went out of their way to say they treated me like any other suspect and had nothing to do with what happened before I got there. Anthony, the jailer called as he opened the door to my cell. Join me. I was shocked to see the girl from my car and an older guy waiting when I got out of the car. The prison guard looked uncomfortable as he led me to them. Okay, judge, your honor. Here you go. Like I said, he's in good shape. We made sure he was safe. The judge didn't answer the jailer, but instead looked at my face and focused on the bruise where Jeff hit me with a phone book. The girl pulled out her phone and began taking shots. I think he is very safe. How many brave men did it take? She took a quick look at the cuts on my wrists. Hitting a man in handcuffs, huh? The judge told them to leave. That's enough. He then looked at me. Son, let's go. Things are going to change. Following suit, the judge left, and so did the girl and I. People in suits went in and out of the Metro Police Commissioner's office while we sat outside and watched. The judge had been inside and hadn't come out yet. Would you like something to drink? Asked the assistant commissioner for administration. I said, sure, I'll take some watermelon juice. Juice from watermelon? She looked shocked. I told her, you said anything. She made it clear that we only have soda, tea, or coffee. What, you didn't mean anything? Just coffee, tea, or soda? I said, that's confusing. The girl spoke up and said, any kind of soda is fine with me. I was pulled to a chair. Dude, calm down. Are you always so tense? I told her that I didn't know what, uptight, meant, but I was just trying to help her understand better. Miscommunication can lead to issues. In the year 1607. Okay, you're a little strange, she said in a cute way. Please be quiet now. Do you not wish to know what happened after the police arrived at the gas station? I think you'll tell me. That's why you're here, right? I answered. She made a face. First, let me say that my name is Dawn. I showed her her badge. It does say New Dawn, though. Yes, my parents were interested in crystals and such, so it's really New Dawn. Please call me Dawn. May I call you Tony? I made it clear that my name is Anthony, not Tony, so you can call me that. Dawn laughed. Okay, Anthony it is. Those two guys tried to catch me stealing, so I ran. Were you stealing something? Dawn looked at me. That's it. Like a big store would care about little things. Do you know how little tax they pay and how little their workers get paid? Not to mention the work that kids do abroad. What does that have to do with stealing things? You stole from the business owner, not the big company, since it's a franchise. Okay, fine. Dawn brushed it off. Do you not believe that the whole police force is dishonest? Look at those two jerks who hit you. I told them that they were different. Dawn didn't understand. What else? A rare case. Most people in a big company do their jobs well. The rest of them are split into three groups, those that succeed, those that are corrupt, and those that just coast. Those two were just two of the few bad guys. A finger was raised. It was bad luck for me to be somewhere else at the wrong time. I would have stayed away from them if it had been a little earlier or later. What about those two cops? Not like most people. Dawn tried to talk, but I raised my hand to silence her. 
a police officer makes a pretty normal amount of money. Not even close to rich. They only follow the rules. You can change the rule or vote for someone who will. Do not blame the people who impose it. That's all I have to say. Now tell me what following. Dawn turned her head. You're not the same. I got out of your car and hid in the gas station when the other police arrived. I saw those two cops point their guns at the clerk and take the security video. She showed her phone. But I kept track of everything from the beginning. They had no idea. They didn't even say they were police, they just chased you. I understood everything, even the threats they made against the clerk. Then I saw the meals on wheels stuff in your car. I told them to send lawyers, tools, and money when I called. She looked at the door to the commissioner's office. Did you know that Meals on Wheels is run by the judge? I said yes. Yes, he is the most important judge in the county and the most powerful politician in the state. He even spoke at my birthday party. Dawn's eyes got bigger. That makes sense. Police from the state of Ohio showed up at the gas station after I called Meals on Wheels. They took your car, grabbed me, the clerk, and ran us to the judge's office. When he saw the video on my phone, he was very angry. It felt like a royal court inside. Even though it was late, a lot of people showed up quickly. People in all sorts of fancy clothes are helping to find you. She touched my face bruise. Those two jerks were going to lock you up with papers, wait until your wounds healed, and then say it was your word against theirs. They put pills in your car too. The office worker just got a call. After she hung up, she talked to me. Anthony, his honor wants to talk to you in his office. To sum up, the two police officers were fired and were charged. The police chief was glad to get rid of them because they had been making reports for a while. While on duty with Metro PD, they were caught working as mall security. That was the end of their lives. Other cops who were involved were warned. The judge, DA, and commissioner owed me a favor. They were shocked when I told them not to punish anyone else. The police believed Mutt and Jeff's story and thought I was part of a gang. I got a large payment from Metro. Even though I don't like nice things, I took the money because I knew the jury would not like how I was treated. After a week, Dawn showed up. Dawn looked at my spot and said, Let's go, Anthony. I heard you got your money. It's time to party. I took a quick look around my simple home. It's not fancy, but it's our home. What the heck, Dawn said. This evening, we're going out. Dawn slammed down the menu and said, I can't eat any of this. We were at a great restaurant in town. A place my grandparents saved for important events when we had the money to pay for it. They had the best meat and, when it was available, crabs or lobster. I looked at the menu and asked Dawn, what's wrong with the meat options? She gave me an angry look. She looked at the menu and said, I'm a vegetarian. Is there anything in this that didn't end in an awful way? I was shocked to hear that you were a vegetarian. She agreed, of course. I thought of something my grandfather said. Dawn, you know that the word vegetarian comes from the Latin word for poor hunter. Dawn pointed her finger at me. You have no idea. We were not made to eat hamburgers. I replied with another quote from my grandfather. Why did nature make cows so easy to catch if they didn't want us to eat hamburgers? Have you ever heard of lion burgers? Dawn looked like she was mad. People were not made to eat meat. People in the past ate fruits, vegetables, and wild foods. She looked at me funny. We no longer live in caves, though. People only lived to be 20 years old back then, but cavemen lived to be 25. She told me to go away. No one knows that old hunters only got lucky about 10% of the time. It was risky to hunt. It's simple to hurt yourself and break bones, and there's no one to help. They would go hungry without plants. Dawn, you're scared of bugs. I can't picture you eating bugs. She made a face. Anthony, you are gross. I put my hands together. People who lived in caves got their nutrition from bugs. The termites, which are 38% protein, were a big hit. Some from Venezuela have as much as 64% protein. Also, they have a lot of iron, calcium, and amino acids like tryptophan. 
Dawn didn't care about it and turned the menu over. The way our ancestors did it is what we need to do. Don't bother with this machine farm stuff. I put down my menu and went on. That means we shouldn't use antibiotics or penicillin, right? Do surgery without putting someone to sleep? Remember when giving birth was the main reason women died? Dawn said, no. We need to take care of ourselves better. She waved her hand around the packed room. It worries me a lot to see what other people eat. I tried to see things from her point of view, but it didn't make sense to me. Dear Dawn, being upset about what other people eat is like being upset that someone ate a donut while you're trying to lose weight. Dawn laughed and threw her menu down on the table. I'll have a salad, but at your house, cake is on me. I showed her the desserts on the menu and asked, are you sure? Key lime pie made from scratch with whipped cream is tonight's treat. For dessert, I can't think of anything better. I was wrong, though. Dawn's plan for dessert was much better than the key lime pie. Also, I wasn't used to eating three servings of key lime pie in one night. You haven't been with many people, have you? Dawn leaned against me as we lay on my bed naked and asked. I put out a finger. Dawn looked at me and sighed. Okay, that's fine. In my life, I've only been in three serious partnerships. I said, but I've been close more than once, thinking of my escort friend. Dawn said, oh, you mean closeness. That's not the same. I'm done with more than three guys. I asked, how many? She looked at the roof and said, I don't remember. I don't date a guy every month. It's okay if you forget. I said, I can do the math. You began at age 17, right? That's around that age, right? Dawn was unsure. Okay, let's pick 17. I began to add up the numbers. That's 30 guys if you had a partner every other month for 5 years. That's a lot. I then said, I don't think I even know 30 guys. Dawn threw a pillow at me. That's not possible. Well, women have 23.9 partners before they get married, even though most say they have less than 10. Today, most women are 29 years old. You can check it out on your own. It would be said that you are 1.25 times more sexual than the average person. If you keep going the way you are, you'll be close with over 70 guys before you get married. That is a lot better than usual. I took a quick look at her. Are you going to call yourself a 403? Dawn looked at me very seriously. Are you calling me at 403? We were just getting close, and now you're calling me a 403. I wasn't sure. I'm sorry, I'm not calling you. I just have a question. I'm sorry if I made you angry. At dinner, I tried to explain my condition. Emotional cues that most people pick up on their own are hard for me to understand. Misunderstandings happen a lot because I'm not aware, and I never know where I went wrong. Dawn calmed down and ran her finger along my chest. It's all right, Anthony. I'm not a 403. She started to move her head down my body. I can be your 403, though. If Dawn was my girlfriend, it made sense for her to live with me. We had to find a bigger place than my small flat. Thanks to Metro's payment, I was able to buy a bigger house. I didn't care much about money, but Dawn liked the comforts it brought. I was learning math and accounting. I loved math, but Grandpa said I should have a useful skill and people always needed bookkeepers. I wasn't sure what Dawn was studying in school. She was always active in some rally or protest on campus, whether it was gays for the metric system, indigenous Muppet rights, or stopping condom testing on animals. Dawn loved every protest in March, but I couldn't keep track of them all. I was happy as long as it made her happy. When we talked about being happy, I was determined to make Dawn happy in bed. So I did what I always did, I looked into everything that had to do with women's pleasure. I read a lot of best-selling books, online forums, magazine pieces, and videos. I even paid to talk to my escort friend and get some tips. I didn't do anything with her either. I was seeing someone now. Wow. Dawn yelled, and as she fell back onto the bed, her face turned red. Where did you discover that? Before answering, I put the toy back in the drawer next to the bed. That's what the worker at the Pleasure Palace said. In fact, she showed me how to use it correctly in the back room. 
From what I've learned, it's one of the best types. Dawn looked at me for a moment and then laughed out loud. I believe you because you're the only one who can watch a stranger do things and still call it study. I was shocked when Dawn got pregnant. Not because she was expecting, but because it didn't work with how we were dating. Dawn didn't seem to mind that we weren't going the normal way, which is to date, live together, get married, and then have kids. It took me two weeks to get Dawn to the courts and explain my side of the story. There were two wonderful events that year that made it stand out. Dawn got married to me, and then our daughter was born. When our daughter was born, we had our first real fight. A nurse was going to help Dawn give birth at home. She said, I don't want our daughter to be born in a hospital full of sick people. I want her to be born in a loving home, close to where she'll grow up in the kitchen in her future bedroom. You don't even cook much in the kitchen, but you want to give birth there. I fought back. Everything felt great when I had a little girl. I started looking into how to be a good parent right away. I talked to child psychologists and university experts for help. Dawn got annoyed when I kept telling her how to be a better mother. In the end, she let me take care of the kids for the most part. She wasn't a bad mom, she just got tired of me taking our daughter to the zoo, concerts, the ocean, and other places all the time. I thought it was my job to give my baby new experiences while Dawn was busy with activities at school. Ten years went by very quickly. As soon as I finished my PhD, I got a job on Wall Street. An important person from a big hedge fund was looking for talented people in math, physics, engineering, and other areas. He was looking for smart people who could figure out how to make 2 plus 2 equal 5. It felt like putting together a huge three-dimensional puzzle. Because of how the rules were set up on Wall Street, we could make 2 plus 2 equal 9. We made a lot of money for this Rubik's Cube math, but that wasn't what drove me. People say that the rich want to be kings and the poor want to be rich. Kings are never happy. But I thought the Wall Street game was fixed. I was happy as long as the money kept my family happy. I had no idea Dawn would cheat on me. It was late for both of us, but Dawn became very involved in politics and is now working to protect the earth. For a while, she really wanted to save animals that were in danger. Anthony, you should know that people are the main reason whales are almost dead. The blue whale's most dangerous enemy is this animal. Dawn, you're partly right, but they are the world's biggest animals. In what other ways do blue whales stay safe? Birds of prey with power tools. Tigers on jet skis. When it came to climate change, her ideas confused me too. Is it funny to you, Dawn, to drive an Escalade to a gathering to save the planet? She looked at me funny. Anthony, the plant is a hybrid. It saves a lot of gas. As soon as I stop for more than a second, the engine turns off to save gas. My answer was, well, my grandfather had a car like that many years ago. I then opened a website on my laptop. But think about the materials that were used to make your Escalade and get rid of the hybrid battery. You can see its carbon impact from space. Dawn raised her hands before she spoke. So you want your wife and child to drive around in a Jetta? These are some of the safest cars out there, and the diesel model gets much better gas economy than your SUV hybrid. Plus, we rarely argued about them. However, I did not see the point in Dawn's need for so much stuff. She would buy these ugly expensive dresses and always say, this looks so much better on me. What do you think? Toasty. But didn't say anything. I was thrilled when Dawn gave birth to our son. I'm not sure if his big sister or I was happy with the new player. After a few years, though, the home market crashed, and that's when things went badly for Dawn. I didn't get a government bailout like most Americans did. CEOs and big banks that were thought to be too big to fail were the only ones who could get those. I went to a bank in a small southern town, far from Wall Street. I made a lot less money than I used to, and our house was underwater when we bought it. Private schools, clubs, spas, teachers, Cadillac Escalades, and trips to Europe were all gone. Starbucks was also out of business. I was proud of how well my kids did. My son was thrilled to have a big yard to play in, and my daughter loved her public school. The small bank wasn't as hard as Wall Street, but the people there were nice. I could tell Dawn wasn't happy, though. 
I had no idea how unhappy she was until eight months after we moved and saw her putting clothes in a bag in our bedroom. Dawn, you look like you're getting ready for a trip. My week off doesn't come until I've worked at the bank for a year. Dawn went to the closet and got another bag. Anthony, they need me in New York City. I'm going to help with the protest on Wall Street. Dawn, we need to stay here. The school year is halfway over. We don't have much money in the bank because I just finished my probationary time at work. Dawn kept putting her clothes away. It doesn't bother me. Taking over Wall Street is a big deal. I'm needed. I'll only be gone for a few weeks. Dawn, you need to come here. What about our kids? Anthony, don't be such a baby. After school, our daughter can take care of herself until you get home. The bank teller Janet has a son about the same age as ours. I asked her to have her maid watch both of their boys until you pick them up. Dawn looked at me. When troops are deployed, they leave their families for long periods of time. Dawn, you're not a soldier. Occupy Wall Street is not a fight or a war. You weren't called. Dawn told me to go. Anthony, I need to help. It's my duty to help them be led. Dawn, you can't lead people from the front. A famous psychologist named Dr. Goncalo found that being in a group of people who share your interests turns on your brain's pleasure areas. If other people are making you think, it's time to move on. Dawn slammed her bag shut hard. Anthony, please don't fight with me. This is not going to go your way. I sat down and tried to talk her down. Either partner can win in a marriage if they try hard enough. It's known as divorce. She looked up from her bag. Our marriage is not going to be one of those 50% that end in divorce. Okay, Dawn. The other half end in death, as in, till death do us part. I tried to explain how her trip would work in real life. Your car's tires won't last to New York. I was going to get new ones when I got paid next. Dawn picked up her bags. I'm not going to take the car. A guy I met online and who writes about the movement is giving me a ride. How are you going to pay for it? This month, we can barely pay our bills. Dawn just shrugged. He told us we could make it work. I didn't know what to do for the first time. I was so shocked that I didn't even hear the car that Dawn took off in. I'm sure she didn't even say goodbye to her kids with a kiss. I didn't get why Dawn left. The kids thought their mom was at a meeting up north, but I wasn't sure when she'd come back. They had a great time when they learned that an Occupy Wall Street protester was married to a banker. They asked for Dawn Occumum. This made things hard even in our small town. My son asked me, Dad, what is a hoe? I told them that a hoe is like a rake used for gardening. His face looked confused. Why do kids at school call mom a yard rake? Then my daughter came in. It's ho, not ho. Like 403. He looked at me. What is a 403? Why do people say, mom's one? It's rude to call your mom a 403, so don't use it. I told him to play outside until dinner. My daughter sat down in a chair and looked sad after he left. Stop it, dad. She's making my school image worse. There are bad things being said. I calmed her down. People say things that we can't change, and to be honest, they probably don't think much about us. Dad, she yelled in a big voice. You don't care. Mom is living in a tent with a stranger, and everyone knows about it. I tried not to get upset. If it makes you mad, don't use the internet. I keep getting links to the blog from my friends, Mr. This is disgusting. I told her, you need to do something. I will, honey. I will. I finally got in touch with Dawn after leaving many voicemails. She told him, sorry, Anthony, it's been crazy here. Dawn, you still haven't called back. I said that I was the one who reached out. You have no idea what's going on here. She told me that no one was paying attention to her issues. I told them not to talk about their problems if no one is listening. 80% are glad it's not happening to them and 20% don't care. Okay, Anthony. You wouldn't understand. People of all kinds are here, from normal people to famous people, she said. Good job, Dawn. Are there any other moms who have left their kids? I asked. 
Anthony, please don't be sarcastic. She replied, you make it sound like I care more about toiletries than my family. Dawn, you need to get toilet paper. I'm not making fun of you. How can you put me and the kids first when you're with someone else? I asked. Anthony, don't be so stupid. We just have a tent together. She insisted that we were not going to sleep together. Good morning, Dawn. Let me read you something from the blog of your tentmate. My post from yesterday was called Occupying the Accumulf Muff, and I started it. Dawn stopped me before I could say anything else. Tony, don't believe everything you read online. He's only making things up to get attention. People who live in a tent with my wife and are unemployed tell me about the scar on your thigh, and I believe them. You need to go home. I urged, I've set up for us to see a marriage therapist who comes highly recommended. She replied, I'm not going to let some Bible-thumping redneck from the middle of nowhere tell me I have to obey you and stay home. That's not what I mean, Dawn. I told you, you need to go home now. I can't. I care about this. To teach me how to swim, my mom told them to throw me in the lake. She said, that's how I learned. I replied, do you ever think they might not have wanted to teach you how to swim? I looked at my watch and told her, your name is on a bus leaving at midnight. I'm going to file for divorce if you don't agree. I heard Dawn talking to someone while she put her hand over the phone. John, I can't leave right now. This cause is very important to me. Dawn, you should not mistake moving for action. I told them that going in circles doesn't get you anywhere, no matter how big the circle is. Are you really going to leave me? Dawn screamed. I told her, Dawn, you left me and the kids on that bus, which made her look confused. After that, I hung up. It was no surprise that Dawn didn't take the bus. It was a week before I heard from her. Why would you do that, Anthony? Dawn yelled on the phone. You want to get a divorce and say your partner abandoned you. You disconnected my cell. To call you, I had to borrow a phone. Which is why I didn't know the number. Dawn went on, and those awful pictures you sent with the divorce papers. Was that really needed? What if the kids saw them? I told her that I didn't think her response was strange. You're scared about the kids now. The kids did find the pictures, just so you know. Your tentmate put them on his blog, and your daughter learned about them from her friends. You say you're not involved with them. I just printed them out. Anthony, I'm truly sorry. I swear I didn't know he was taking pictures. I forgot to pay attention at the time. We're all fighting for the same reason, and I messed up. Dawn, how long did this last? I sent you seven pictures, each with a time stamp from seven nights in a row. Anthony, I know it wasn't a good idea to sleep with him, but it was just one guy. Dawn told me, and I was shocked by what I heard. What does it matter how many partners there are? I had to work hard to hear Dawn's answer over the background noise. Anthony, you need to get a bigger picture of this. Should I lose everything because of my mistake? This doesn't mean that our marriage has to end. A lot of couples have been through worse and come out better. This event might make our bond stronger. Dawn, that's as confusing as when Yogi Berra said, if you don't go to other people's deaths, they won't come to yours. As I adjusted the phone, Dawn continued. Listen, I have a guy here who's connected. His dad owns a major law firm in this state. He's saying you'll get crushed in court if you keep pushing for this divorce. A man's voice came over the phone over all the other noise. How are you? Can you hear me, Anthony? Yes, I can, I replied. The voice said, boy, you're doing this all wrong. Every day at my big law company, I see guys like you get smacked by the courts. If I speak for your wife, you'll lose. Do you know the person you're getting into this with? This talk seems strange. I am sorry, but I do not know who your father is. Your mom might not have told you. What? The voice on the other end was rough. That's right, I replied. It's possible that your mom slept with so many guys that it's hard to figure out who your dad is. If you need help, I'm here to give it. Are there any things about you that make me think you're African American, Hispanic, or Asian? The man yelled, you jerk. My family has lived in this country since it was still a colony. What's making you so mad? I asked the truth. 
I just want to help out. Also, my mom had more than one partner before you were born, not your mom. You might want to find out if she lived near a military base when you were born. A DNA record kept by the government could help you find out who your mom used as a sperm donor. I'm gonna destroy you in court, I heard the guy shout before Don must have taken the phone from him. Anthony, are you still there? Don asked. Yeah, I'm here, Don. Are you certain that you want that person to handle our divorce? He seems very insecure, which is likely because he doesn't trust his dad. Leave him alone. He told her to forget about the breakup. In a marriage, everyone cheats at least once. It's no longer a big deal. Don, you're wrong. A new study from Gallup found that 91% of Americans think having an affair is morally wrong. Just 9% think it's fine. A lot of states still think that cheating is wrong, even though divorce is more common now. Oh no, Anthony, getting a divorce is not the answer. Don, you can't give the right answer to a wrong question. Fine, you wanna fight? Don spit. I'm going to beat you. Don't forget that people who live by the sword also die by the sword. What do you think cutlery has to do with our split, Don? Also, these days, people who live by the sword get shot by people who don't. What else did I hear before the line went dead? It was clear about one thing. Don won the divorce, and her lawyer made sure I got almost nothing. There were laws in our state that helped her get alimony, and her lawyer used those laws to take my retirement savings, home equity, and cash. I didn't mind giving up those things, though, because in turn I got full custody of our kids. Even though Don won the fight, I didn't feel like he really won. Don's participation in the Wall Street protest brought her attention and even led to a book deal and a movie deal. It said in the press statement why Don didn't try to get alimony, which my daughter showed me. But it didn't make sense that she took money out of my accounts and then said she couldn't pay child support. People in our small town made fun of her because she was famous now, which caught me off guard. Even the people I worked with were mean to me. Janet, a single mom and a co-worker, shed some light on the problem. Anthony, you might not see it, but a lot of old-fashioned ideas are still around here, especially about how to treat women, Janet said. What else could I have done? I asked. Janet put her hand on my back and said, this mess wasn't my fault. Anthony, I get it. Don, your ex-wife, seems a little strange. There is so much treatment and medicine out there that I bet 25% of women in this country have some kind of mental health problem. I thought about what she said. That means three quarters are out there without being treated. Janet punched me in the shoulder out of the blue and complained that we were all the same. I kept going while rubbing my sore shoulder. I don't care what they think. What does my personal life have to do with my job anyway? Trust is very important at the bank. Janet said, people wonder how you'll handle their money if you can't handle your own family. She might have been right, but I put my family first. They only worked at the bank to make ends meet. But it did cause some problems at work. Some people stayed away from me because they thought my personal problems might make them feel bad. Then, one day, the boss shocked me. He told her, you're in charge tomorrow. Make sure the staff follows the rules. The next morning, I got there early and said hello to my team. I came out to a shocking scene after a short tour and a trip to the bathroom. Men in masks were scaring my staff, and one of them had bombs in the air. Who the hell is the boss? One of them shouted. I'm the manager for now, I said, recalling robbery training. If you're here for cash, we'll give it. Otherwise, come back when we're open. The criminal grabbed my tie, shaking the dangerous device. He pushed me down, so stop making jokes. Struggling with my tie, I got up slowly. Those things made me angry. They started in Croatia ages ago, as a sign of respect to the king. It's not clear why we still wear them. I trained myself to keep my hands up while I spoke to the wrongdoer. We do not want trouble. I will get you the money without any trouble. Better, he told them as he threw a bag to them. A million dollars right now. Because of what I had learned, I didn't fight. We're a small group, but I'd love to. We only get $75,000 a week, and that bag can't hold a million dollars. He glared. What are you talking about? I said it was 22.026 pounds. 
$100 bills weigh 1 gram. There are 10,000 pounds in a million. We don't have that much, though. The criminal took Janet from the line of tellers and held her hostage by putting something dangerous to her head. I had only dealt with things like that in video games, so I wasn't sure what kind it was. It might have been fragmentation, high explosive, or phosphorus, but it seemed strange. Manager, listen up. The criminal asked me to pay attention. I'll kill her if she doesn't give me all the money in this bank right now. I nodded toward the trunk and said, okay. The money is still there. Then let's go crazy. Janet fell when he pushed her toward the bag. We hid behind the locked door in the vault, past the safe deposit boxes. Thief took the bag and ran away. The criminal stopped our way out and then, out of the blue, threw the device into the vault. He yelled, goodbye, suckers, as he ran off. As the thing moved toward Janet, time seemed to slow down. I saw one worker pass out and heard screams. I dropped to get it when I remembered I was in charge. It felt like I was moving through syrup, but I caught it. I tripped Janet and ran quickly to the vault's exit, but it felt like I was running through mud. I finally got out, and I shut the vault door with my foot. It seemed to take a long time. I knew that the strong old door would protect everyone inside from the blast, but the door to the safety deposit room was locked, trapping me inside with the bomb. I saw an open safety deposit box that we used for demos and put it inside. Then I closed the lid tightly. My left hand went into the box, and I pushed it into a hole in the wall that was already full of boxes. Then there was a flash of blinding light, and I was thrown backwards over the counter. When I could see again, my ears were ringing and my whole body felt like it had been stung by bees. As Janet knelt in front of me, her lips moved but she didn't say anything. She took my tie off and wrapped it around my left hand. When I looked up, I saw a hole where the thing I had put was. The room still smelled like smoke, and my face was wet. When I wiped my forehead with my hand, I saw that it was stained with blood. The staff got even bigger, but I still couldn't hear them. I tried to get up, but I was too heavy. Janet told me to sit down and then began taking off her blouse. The smell of her perfume was nice after the smell of tool powder, and I was trying to guess what scent it was when I passed out. I slowly cleared my mind, and I realized I was lying in a hospital bed. These things were wrapped around my left foot and hand. A doctor in a white coat stood nearby, jotting down notes on a notebook. Welcome back, Rambo, the doctor said casually, not stopping to look up. I removed a lot of shrapnel from your face and head, but you'll heal up fine. Plus, chicks dig scars. He pointed his pen at me. He went on, you also lost a few fingers and your thumb. Luckily, you still had enough of your thumb to move your big toe to your hand. With some treatment, you'll regain about 80-85% to 85 of movement in that hand, though I doubt you'll be tickling the ivories at Carnegie Hall anytime soon. I wasn't sure. Doc, I've never even played the piano at Carnegie Hall. The doctor didn't say anything. Someone saved your skin by putting your tie on it. You might have lived because you thought quickly. He then put my chart away and left the room. The bank manager was standing on the other side of the bed when I felt someone move. He said to Anthony, you crazy son of a witch. I had no idea you'd pull off something like that. Anything could be seen on the security cams. It looked like a scene right out of a Bruce Willis Die Hard movie. He ran his hand through his hair. You know, Anthony, we're all pretty proud of you and what you did, and well, we all feel bad about how you've been treated lately with the split and all. There was an uncomfortable silence before the bank manager tried to change the subject by clapping his hands together. Of course, you're not the only one we're proud of, he said, pointing behind him. In this case, Janet put a few dye packs in the thief's bag. They were looking inside when the packs blew up, putting dye on them and the window as a whole. He laughed as he said that they lost control of the car and crashed into Cream Time Donut Shop. All the police in the county caught those jerks. I tried to smile, but my face felt funny. The boss of the bank looked at Janet. Hey Janet, I need to get back to work. Could you watch over Anthony for me? He put his hand on my shoulder. Anthony, take as much time as you need. Everything is being paid for by the bank, and we're all so proud of you. Janet spoke up after the boss left. Your kids are at the sitters with mine. 
The kids are having a great time being the hero's kids. Before she got on my bed, she shut the door. She asked with a half smile, a die-hard scene, Anthony. It's more like die stupid. You know that was just a flashbang and not a real bomb, right? When I realized what had happened, I spoke up, it was an M84 flash device. Standard size, two-thirds of a pound, full of ammonium and magnesium. Janet shook her head. As for that, I don't know about it. But if you hadn't gone all action hero, our ears would be ringing. I glanced at the bandages on my hand. Yeah, by trapping that blast in the safety deposit box, I turned a harmless bang into a real explosion. I knew I hadn't meant to put everyone in danger, but I still felt stupid. Sorry, Janet, I never meant to risk the bank or its staff. Janet grinned at me. Don't think about the bank. They love all the attention. What about you? You're my hero. You should know that I don't just take off my clothes for anyone. She took her lipstick off my mouth. Because of how they treated you, they should all take a moment to be sorry. I have friends who work at the sheriff's office. They're talking about it like you defused a real bomb. They won't say it was a flashbang, but they also won't say it wasn't. I used my good hand to point at her. But Janet, won't the court find out the truth? She laughed. They agreed to plead guilty. They aren't going to say it was a flashbang. Everyone should think they were big shots while they're in jail. It doesn't sound as hard to use a firecracker that has been dressed up. Have fun being a hero. You might even be in charge of the town's parade this year. I shrugged, feeling uneasy but too tired to care. Janet gave my thigh a squeeze. You also owe me a shirt. Also, the bank owes you money, and I'm going to get it. I never got to get Janet that shirt. She wouldn't take any money, not even to watch my kids while I was in the hospital. Janet told me to keep my money when I tried to pay her back, Anthony. The boys play with each other, and your daughter is just like the daughter I've always wanted. I didn't want to argue, but I did remember to save money for her kids' schooling. I was shocked to see a fancy limo sitting outside Janet's house when we got there. When I saw my ex-wife Dawn and another lady on the porch, my surprise grew. As Janet helped me get out of the car, she said under her breath, somewhere a village is missing its idiot. Dawn and a woman who looked very serious stayed on the porch while Dawn helped me get up the driveway. Oh my god, Dawn gasped as she reached out to me. I flew here as fast as I could and got a cab. Dawn gave me a hug, and I stood still. Something was different in her eyes when she let go and looked at me. I've never been a big fan of the health craze. I didn't start doing hard workouts right away like a lot of guys who just got divorced do. Also, sitting at a desk all day didn't help my weight loss much. No worries, Anthony, Dawn said, poking my stomach. I have a new eating plan that will help you lose weight quickly. Dawn's talk about vegetables didn't make me feel good. The diet business thrives on a 98% failure rate. As soon as they lose weight, most people put it all back on. I'm already in shape to fight, I'm too big to run away from a fight. Dawn tried to laugh about it. You're hilarious, but a little exercise will do wonders for you. My hand throbbed and I was tired. If walking or biking were the key to immortality, package carriers would live forever. A whale moves all day, eats fish, drinks water, and stays fat. Rabbits can hop and run, but they only live for 15 years. Toads don't do anything, but they can live up to 450 years. So, why should I work out again? Dawn looked over at Janet, who was standing nearby. It looks like you got your dislike of exercise from her, she said, probably making fun of Janet's body. Janet rolled her eyes and yelled. It's been shown over and over again that women who are a little overweight tend to live longer than thin women who are obsessed with being overweight and get into fights. The strict woman next to Dawn reached out to shake my hand. Hey there, Anthony. I work as Dawn's publicist. We're all very excited about this chance. Dawn stopped her, though. What a great way for my story to end. You get better with my care, and then we all get back together as a family. The publicist happily agreed. When we told Lifetime about the idea, they were thrilled. It could even become a series. Dawn reached out to me. This could make me a lot of money and famous. I mean for us. I told them straight out, no. 
What? Dawn and her spokeswoman both said at the same time. No, I said it again. What did you not get about, no? The PR person tried to fix the problem. Tony, you should pay attention to Dawn because I agree with you. I shook my head at her. There is always someone on your side that you wish was on the other side. The spokeswoman didn't seem to remember what I said. I know that a lot has been going on for you lately, and you may not be able to think straight. Your recent head injury and the shock of Dawn and your breakup may have made it harder for you to make good decisions. You really should consider this chance. It's not every day that something like this comes your way. Janet gripped my arm to guide me toward the door before addressing the publicist. In that case, you'd better call before stopping by. We wouldn't want to mistake you for chance knocking. Dawn moved in front of me. Anthony, no more. What do you have planned? We fit together. I'm needed. You understand that I'm the only one like you. I looked at her for a while. Dawn, that doesn't make sense. I don't like you at all. Why would I want to find someone who is even slightly like you? Dawn tried something different. Antony, things aren't the same anymore. As she talked, her words made me cringe. A lot of people will want to read this book and watch the TV show. Would you really like to be seen as the bad guy? I mean, even the dog will hate you by the time I'm done telling the story if I leave this porch. Dawn, that's not true. It doesn't matter to the dog. Dawn looked at Janet. You believe in those things that people say by pounding the Bible, right? Don't you think that the books of Corinthians or Genesis have something that can help me with this? Janet let go of my arm so I could face Dawn and her assistant. Yes, I do have a Bible quote that might help Anthony, but I don't have one for you. She gave Dawn a quick look and pointed to the street. Leave my house. Janet then smiled and winked at me. That comes from Exodus. The PR person and Dawn were shocked. That's not how you talk to me. Dawn spoke slowly. Janet talked as she walked me toward the door and didn't look back. It would only be a scratch if I shot you both in the head. Dawn said out loud, let's see what the sheriff says about your threats. Janet did turn around this time and held out her cell phone. Uncle Bob, the town policeman is the sixth person you should call right away. As soon as Dawn and the PR didn't answer the phone, Janet said, I have an unloaded magnum, eight acres of land, and a shovel. Do not bother me or the people I care about. Janet shut the door behind me as I stumbled through it. Her book went straight to the bargain bin pretty fast, and her movie. It didn't even make it to the video level. It wasn't long before she was number one for 15 minutes. She did try to see the kids when she had time, which is good. We could tell how well her job was going by the type of car she drove when she came by. First there were limos, then town cars, then cabs, and finally shared shuttles. Dawn still came every time with gifts and news about projects she was working on. When she last came to town, she was in a beat-up old Mercedes with an ex-actor who had lost everything. My son saw her most recent work, a goofy, low-budget reality show way up in the cable TV channels. Janet made a joke that Dawn had vapidus locatus. What is that? I asked. Janet spoke up. It's made-up illness where people try to get attention without doing anything. They end up on weird cable channels in the middle of the night and then disappear, only to appear in ads for personal care products or reverse mortgages from time to time. We should feel sorry for Dawn and give her maybe seven seconds of our full attention. That's why I don't think Janet was serious or that Vapidus Locatus is real. The kids thought it was funny. It was nice to meet Janet's brother. Also, he has autism, which helps explain a lot about how she understands. Janet and I finally got together. We had a lot in common, so it made sense to join forces. Our families and resources would help us to live a normal middle-class life. I and the kids both love Janet. In fact, I was asked to ride on the main float in the Founders Day Parade. Many people think that to be rich, you need a lot of money, but I've learned that having a lot of cash doesn't always mean you're rich. What matters is not what you have, but who you have with you.